Support the show by donating at themusicbuds.com. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Music Buds podcast. This is episode number 22, and my name is Henry. This week, uh, I'm so happy to be joined by the punk band Skating Polly out of Oklahoma City. With me is Kelly Mayo. Hi. <laughs> uh, Peyton Big Horse. Hello. And Curtis Mayo. Hey. Uh, so first of all, thank you so much for taking the time. I, I love this band, this music, and I me it means a lot for it to be taking the time. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we are stoked. <laughs> <laughs> How's life, first of all? Okay, life for me has been really, really weird. I've been obsessed with politics lately. I stay up every night oh. <laughs> just reading tweets, re-watching Sasha Baron's code and stuff that I've already watched. Mm -hmm. I, I've, it's been weird because I've been on mute. And so um, I can't just like cathartically sing to myself about things. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've, I'm still not like singing yet. So I'm like talking. And, uh, but yeah, and I play piano and I, I do artistic stuff too, but I've been really obsessed with um, this election. How was you guys like? How's your life? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I've, I've, I've spent like a lot of time and energy in the first half of the pandemic, like trying to, you know, focused on the election stuff. But at this point, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit more calm about it, I think. But I've, I've been like just kind of trying to keep myself from going crazy. I've been watching like, insane amount of movies i said i saw like yeah so that's that's about it yeah. my life has just been all divorce <laughs> <laughs> you want to elaborate on that <laughs> i'm not getting divorced i work at a, a divorce law firm and it's just oh wow it's that's... been crazy and hectic yeah i'm sure <laughs> I mean, especially right now, that's, I'm sure that's a lot to handle. Yeah. Um, at first it slowed down kind of a little bit at the beginning of the pandemic. And then it was like, <laughs> boom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that I makes like sense. The idea that at the beginning of the pandemic, people were like, well, maybe we should just work this out, you know, <laughs> stuff here together. And then it was like, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> And uh, well, Curtis, well, since I, I also do a movie show called The Film Buds, we'll have to talk about the movies at some point because I'd be yeah. I'm curious as to what you've been watching as well as you two, if you all have been checking out any movies or TV shows. Well, I guess kicking things off a little bit, I know Kelly and Peyton, you started this band when you were so young, I think, what, nine and 14 years old, right? Mm -hmm. What was yeah. that like? I can't imagine myself starting a band that young, just like mentally not being able to handle it. So what was that like starting a, a group so young? It was, uh, I don't know. I mean, it was just my favorite way to spend time. I mean, yeah. it gave me like validation and it made me feel like I didn't need, like, you know, I was better than the kids I was being bullied by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and it was cool too, because I, when my parents got divorced, actually my whole childhood kind of the people around me would talk to me like I was an adult and they would talk to me like I was smart. And whenever we started our band, we weren't playing with like other kid bands. We were playing with like real bands in the scene and we got like um, really embraced. And so I don't know. I just, I felt it was very validating and it was like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a tough question to answer because we, we did start when we were so young and we don't know what it's like to have not started when we were right. that young. It's just like what we've known pretty much our whole lives. Yeah. Um, but I'll, yeah, another thing too is like, I say this a lot, like we never had formal training playing music and stuff and it was just we just kind of started playing with instruments and like writing songs because we liked the songs we were singing like it it just felt good yeah and so that was that was cool because it gave this like this feeling of like any any of the arts you can kind of do that with just go in it and as long as you like and believe in what you're doing then you're doing it mm -hmm. um and so, and also like when, when you're young, you're not as bogged down with like, you know, so much 
self-awareness and like overthinking everything. And it's just like, ah, this is good. Let's pop that out. And so it really got us in this pattern of like, just feeling like, you know, I mean, we were just doing it. We weren't worrying about like the details of how do you do this? And so that's kind of been our approach always ever yeah. since. I mean, it's like ugly pop, like fuck perfection. Let's just yeah. proceed and see what comes out, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, Curtis, when, uh, when did you, or how did you come into the picture? <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, I'm Kelly's older brother. I was kind of just hanging out, doing other stuff while they were practicing in our living room and, and stuff. So that there was that, and then like you know, I, I was going to school and just like in high school and doing like plays and doc, like we did some, I did some documentaries with some friends, and that was kind of where my focus was. And then after high school, uh, I moved up to Washington with them. The whole family did. And I just kind of was, you know, whenever they weren't uh, practicing, I'd go practice drums. And then it would just kind of slowly like, oh, hey, well, I got this riff I'm working on. You want to play drums while I do that? Because Peyton's not around. It's like, yeah, sure. And then that happened. And then they released the uh, new trick EP with uh, Louise and uh, Nina. And it was like, oh, okay, so this, these are more fleshed out songs, you know, more instrumentation. Hey, do you want to come on this tour? And then it was like, yeah, well, okay, this is, now, now you're in the band. It was cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing that I, I respect so much and, and I think is so great is you, you have ex toured extensively. Yeah. Uh, it's been really cool. I I know for, well, me personally, I get really crazy whenever I'm in one place for too long. I constantly like to change where I'm at. And I feel like I, I don't know, I, I just, I, yeah, I feel absolutely insane when I'm stuck in one place. So that's been one thing that's really hard about this pandemic is because I just get used to the scenery constantly changing and like constantly trying you know, ooh, what's the restaurant around here? Ooh, what's the walk I could go on around here? Ooh, what's, you know, like, yeah, what language do they speak here? How many, people, you know, I don't know. It's, it's really insane to think that we've, we've, yeah, played for audiences that the majority of them don't speak English right. and yet know our songs, like can sing along to our songs. That's happened in Germany. That's happened in France. Every time we go somewhere new, I'm expecting like, well, if we can get 15 bodies in there, I'll be pretty <laughs> happy. Um, and we've been uh, really uh, well, you know, it, it's always uh, usually better than that, actually. <laughs> we we want to go to Spain super badly. There's still so many places in, in Japan. And once you start going to more places that you never thought you'd ever get to go, you just like, you start dreaming of going to even more places. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh no, it's, it's, that, that really feels like something like I live for, like going around and playing music for people all over the world. <laughs> it feels yeah. like our calling. <laughs> um, well, now, uh, talking about touring uh, as well, I know that you've toured with some pretty notable artists. Who are some uh, out of the many that you've toured with? Um, yeah, well, X is a really big one for us. Yeah. They're like our mentors. I mean, they're such a big part of skating poly from just like inspiring us and also just giving us direct like guidance. Like Exine has taught me so many things directly. She's written songs with me. Um, she's produced our record. So they're a really big one. I think a lot of our fan base actually comes from X, old, like, you know, older X fans. Yeah. Um, Babes in Toyland, which mm. is another, just one of my favorite bands of all time. Yeah. Um, they took us on their only UK tour they did when they when they reunited back in 20, God, was that 2015? It's a while ago yeah. now. Um, was it yeah, she would have had them in, I think. Kate Nash, one of, who's again, become one of our best yeah. friends. Like, oh, man. Uh, she's taken us out twice now. Uh, Deerhoof is a really big one. And what's cool about all those groups is that they're all vastly different. And mm. so we've gotten to be ex like, all these people who like their music has, have been exposed to our music. So our fan base is made up of this, like, you know, just a, a lot of really different people. Yeah. You know? yeah. People of all ages, genders, people who like all sorts of different kinds of music. 
you know what's yeah. really cool too is like I feel like in the last year it's been like a change that uh, we uh, we've been touring with more of our peers like like Potty Mouth and Monster Watch. We've gotten yeah. like kind of like these tour and Star Crawler, and it's like I, if I could just like shout out the, like Potty Mouth and Monster Watch and Star Crawler. Oh, All those Charlie bands Bliss. Are awesome. Oh yeah, Charlie Bliss. Oh yeah. my gosh, I was that was one of the best tours. When we were writing the Make It All show, I was just constantly listening to Charlie Bliss and specifically the song. Free will at ease. I was like, I want to write the bass for this to sound like one of Spencer's guitar riffs. So, like, I just went and like listened over and over and over again to one of their songs, and I was like, okay, so if I was Spencer and like way worse at guitar and playing my three string bass instead, this is what I would do on the song. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I should say I uh, interviewed Potty Mouth a, about a month ago. They're they're awesome. Oh, I love them. Yeah, they're really cool. I did want to mention uh, on a personal note, the, the way I, I uh, got exposed to your music is a few years ago, I was going on a trip and I was trying to find new music to listen to. And I truly, from the beginning of the trip until I got to the location, I listened to your, to your music. I just went through your whole discography. And I, I just wanted to say that because like, I just had this immediate rare connection with your music and I enjoyed it so much. Oh wow! Thank you. That's cool. So much. Yeah, yeah. that's a that's a really good compliment. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 interesting whenever people listen to like our entire discography because even though there's songs that I really like from even the first record and stuff like I'm I'm proud of those. It, it's kind of funny because the performances were like done by a child, and so I'm like slightly <laughs> subconscious like they're gonna know I'm little. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Yeah, so it's always like interesting. I'm like, oh god, are they going to just think that's terrible? How is that going to come across to them? Is that going to like, you know, uh, somehow un like give me minus points for the music that I've done when I'm like 18? You know what I mean? Like, is that going to be a strike against me? <laughs> I like way overthink it. Yeah. Uh, now you have worked on. Uh, you have collaborated with the producer Brad Wood who did, uh, who was worked with Smashing Pumpkins as well as many other big artists. What was that collaboration like? Was that a kind of a daunting thing or was that just kind of more, or was the relationship just very easy? Kind of friendly. It was uh, super friendly? natural. Brad is like, he just like gets us as people and as musicians and every, like from the very beginning, the first thing we'd ever did with him with Veruca Salt was just so easy and it didn't feel embarrassing and I I don't think we were self-conscious really um he didn't try to like intimidate <laughs> us or like it was like a match made in heaven he's just like a big goofball just like us <laughs> and also he would never make me feel dumb for like Brad is so musically capable he has a degree in percussion and you know, just knows all this musical terminology, can play guitar really well, can play drums, can play bass, can play pretty much anything. But he never made me f feel dumb for like not knowing musical terminology. And he'd really work with me whenever I like felt like something was off and I couldn't really explain it. And I'd use really strange, like I'd color really strange pictures to try <laughs> to describe what I was wanting. And, and he would just be like, okay, so like this? Okay, wait, no, so more like this? Um, he also has just been my favorite producer to work with on like vocal takes mm -hmm. because of that same thing where he just understands what I'm going for. So when I can't hear it, like he can quickly be like, okay, well I like that take, but you're doing that thing that you didn't like where you went kind of nasally at the end. And I'm like, damn it, I did that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. so we used to do um, things to inspire us to like, we would come in early in the morning and he would be blasting a new record every day. Like this one, this one song reminds me of this record. So. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he would pick out these influences. Like, you know, when we were recording Make It All show, he'd be like, well, this reminds me kind of like of ACDC. I think we could like, and I would be like, ACDC, <laughs> that's not. <laughs> so, or Tom Tom Club was another one he like yeah. pulled out of it. And I was like, again, I wouldn't have thought either of those. And then we kind of went in that direction with certain things production wise. And it was yeah. a nice community. And he is a snack. Master, <laughs> gotta throw that in there. He Provides does not lack when it comes. To yeah. <laughs> also, unintentional. We have an ongoing group chat. That's uh, 
420 bad bitches, I yeah. think it's called. <laughs> Every day at 420, we all just, and I don't think Brad smokes weed at all or anything, but <laughs> anytime, I mean, I'm sure he has, but I don't think he does it really anymore. No, yeah, I think he's <laughs> paranoid. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so every day at 420, like, you can just sit and just expect a, a screenshot from Brad of, <laughs> of it. Of or if, if we find 420 out in the wild, you know, it's, oh, man. It's, we're always sharing that. <laughs> yeah, become a tradition. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, talking about your different albums, are there are there any ones that stand out, like even individual songs that you feel, not necessarily that you're most proud of, but is there one that you feel closest to or the one maybe perhaps that you've seen connects most with other people? Are there any that stand out to you? I mean, you know, that whole last record really kind of just stands out to me because I tried to make every single song about like you know something way like a big part of my constant thought process like like things that I was kept constantly catching myself feeling or thinking got a song devoted to them so I mean that whole record really kind of resonates with me um and then flyer as well that was a song where that kind of really resonates through the pandemic. I mean, that's cheesy to be like this song that, <laughs> of my own that describes how I'm feeling right now. But <laughs> through the pandemic, like Flyer almost like predicted how I would feel even more yeah. so because it was kind of about me being trapped, like feeling like I couldn't go outside and being really paranoid and being in insanely self-conscious to the point where I just like wasn't motivated. And then I'd get really motivated, but then I'd be like overly like, overthinking everything so it was kind of paralyzing and and just you know like reading other people's opinions on things too much where I couldn't you know where I was like scared to disagree with people but also wanted to disagree with everyone and you know I don't know yeah. so yeah. I think fire really has been resonating with me um lately what about you Paige? um I think for me it's like kind of all three of the songs that I have that I sing on make it all show but really specifically free will at ease because like it was just like usually whenever I would write before that record I would just try to like write about write about things that were personal but not be too specific and with free will at ease I just felt like I was like this is something that's happened to me and it sucked and it was like maybe the worst thing that has happened to me up to this point in my life and I'm just gonna tell you guys all about it and mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to talk about it because that's what the song is about and yeah. And um, so that was like a big, that was a really tough growing situation for me because I wasn't used to writing like that. Yeah, yeah that was an interesting one to write too, like, because <laughs> basically me and Curtis all sat down and the guy who that song is about, Peyton was still with at the time, I, yeah. I believe. I was still with him. And Kelly and Curtis, I like. I was struggling writing the lyrics because I, I at first I wanted, I was like with them, and I wanted it to be this like grand love song. And then like Kelly and Curtis come in, and um, we just kind of ripped it apart and turned it into something that actually like is a lot more accurate to how I was feeling at the time and how I feel now and how things ended up. And yeah, it and, was like it just like wasn't a healthy thing going on, and like. Of course, like I knew it, but I, I didn't want to admit it because I had everyone telling me that it wasn't healthy. And <laughs> but the interesting oh, yeah. thing about it too, Peyton, is when you first brought it to us, it was kind of more yeah. of a love song than it is now. But still, yeah. it would have these like really depressing lyrics about how you felt like shit. And I was just like, <laughs> well, I think we should lean into the how you feel like shit part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And, and the other song... The uh, Don't Leave Me Gravity and Long Ride are, are in a similar vein, but not as about such a heavy thing to me. Like, but the, they, they both feel really personal to me, too. Yeah. Like, I, I, as far as, like, for me, I don't, I, I, you know, all the songs I make it all show, but, like, for noticing audiences just reacting and, like, getting into it, I think by the time we get to Hail Mary in a set, I feel like people are just kind of like, whoa, like they kind of like <laughs> the way that that song goes. Like, I don't, I don't, I think people also like, cause it, I, the, I think the video and stuff, I think a lot of people just related to it and projected their own thing onto it. And I, I think 
Like that's not like a super personal song to me because I wasn't involved in their reporting on it, but like it is now because I've played it so much and like people Aww. like, you know, right. like seeing people react is kind of made it like, okay, this is like really, really. Important. I'm really proud of that one because it kind of set this, this, um, it, 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 the structure is unique and different and there's kind of a lot of parts in it. And I kind of used something that I learned from the structure of that song over and over again on the make it all show where I kind of like purposefully use different structures where you don't hear the chorus right away or where you're wondering like, what is the chorus? And I had to fight Nina and Louise on that structure. I remember. So I was like, no, no guys, like, trust me. This is like, the show. it's like four and a half minutes long. I don't know. I think we should get to that one part sooner. I think we should cut out this part. I was like, no, we should keep your part. We should keep your part. We should keep my part. Let's just make it. Let's just do it. it and all. they came mm-hmm. around and we all really love that song. <laughs> so that's awesome. and, and another one another one for me is um gosh i'm sorry my brain is blanking um little girl in the little girl blue in the battle little girl blue in the battle on b <laughs> yeah i just had such a big blank um uh, but yeah that mm-hmm. one um i didn't i didn't write the lyrics or anything kelly, kelly did but and it was it was really true to i think how she was feeling at the time but it was also like really relatable i think it's I think it would be to everyone, but just like feeling lost and like just really struggling. And I mean, I think that's kind of how a lot of the album was. I don't know. If, yeah. Yeah. And it was just, but she really just nailed it on that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think, well, I, I guess for lack of a better term, like the, the struggle for art, I think that really comes through because the vulnerability and the troubles that's what, you know, at least what I most connect with. And so I think that even if it can be kind of hard to put out there while you're making it, that personal connection really comes through. So I think you did a really good job. <laughs> thank you. Wow. That's, uh, thank you. Yeah. Shifting gear a little bit from music and just talking about uh, this year, what have y'all, I know we, we can touch on movies. Have there been any hobbies, any habits, anything going on helping you stay relatively sane i've been really into um like guitar and piano um i've been like learning other people's songs on guitar and piano which is a thing i usually don't do um because honestly usually when I, i start to like learn a cover or something first of all my favorite part of covers is like singing covers even if i'm just singing it to myself but then second of all like if I learn how to do like a do 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 on guitar or something, then I immediately like start writing a song where I change it to like do 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 And so um, I've been doing that. I've been journaling a lot. I've been drawing a lot. And me and Curtis have these like great movie nights where we just like stay up really effing late um i've been using the word effing a lot but i also still cuss a lot so i don't know where mm. that well, came from actually <laughs> time and place you know <laughs> uh but yeah um wait there was something else that's kind of important that i've been doing but now i can't remember oh i was in an i got to be in a music video for x that was really cool oh cool um i was i was silent a lot of this year, which sucked, um, it was sucky, sucky time. Yeah. Um, oh, and I've been really obsessed with Miranda July. She's hmm. been like my hero through this pandemic. I've read all of her books. I've watched all of her movies. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. Your turn. <laughs> um, I have been, I, I, I've been like, um, I've kind of just become really routine driven which I mean I always have been but like super routine driven now that everything like a routine for me used to be like on tour we wake up and we drive to the venue and we do sound check and we go eat dinner and we play a show and then we go to the hotel and now the routine is wake up every day go to work get back from work read take a walk with my dog get home (laughs) go to bed yeah I um just work and that's funny because yeah. I've been the complete opposite direction. <laughs> I, I change routines like every three days. Every three days, I'm like, I found the key to life. And then I'm like, I don't, no, not that one. Let's try something else. I don't, know if, um, <laughs> I don't know if I can say that falling into a routine has kept me sane, but 
it's kept me um, on a routine. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm the same way, so I feel that. Yeah, I have, I have not found any sort of routine whatsoever, really. I've just kind of, I've, I've kind of just like noticed that. I don't know. Yeah, I've just really, I've just, I've, I've tried to kind of keep, tried to be better about being on the schedule and stuff, but I can't even keep like that straight at all. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it's watching a bunch of movies. I've kind of, I found a smoker, like an old, like a barbecue smoker on the side of the road and I cleaned that up and then I was nice. like, yeah, this will be my thing. This will be my thing. And then I did it like four times and I really liked it, but kind of a pain in the ass. So, <laughs> and it's kind of getting cold outside, so I can't do it anymore. Yeah. But um, it's, it's, it's good though. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what are some, uh, speaking on, on movies, TV shows, what are some ones you've been watching? Any? Um, on, I, uh, on Criterion, there's this old movie that they just put out. Like it's, I've been trying to track it down for a little bit called death dream. Mm. And it's like a, uh, it's a four seventies horror thing. And it's got the dude from the Godfather who finds the horse's head in his bed. Oh yeah. As the father of a, of a, of a Vietnam war vet and like opens up, find out that his, finds out his son died in Vietnam. Hmm. And then the next day his son shows up on his doorstep and he's like hmm. super pale and super acting weird. And it's awesome. It's really cool. <laughs> um, Sounds cool. <laughs> other than that, I've just been kind of like, like more, more than that. I've, a lot of horror, uh, a lot of, kind of adjacent stuff like uh, you Richard. like the Miranda July stuff too. I love the Miranda July stuff that is really like the best things I've seen this year are yeah Miranda July's uh me you, me, you and everyone we know hmm. Sorcerer by William Friedkin oh yeah and probably Rear Window uh I'd never seen that before and that That's was great. I mean, awesome yeah my um I think my favorite thing okay so I like my like line, like my mantra of this year is, is this lyric from Fiona Apple's Extraordinary Machine, which is like, I'm good at being uncomfortable, so I can't stop changing all the time. And I also really like uncomfortable movies and TV shows. That's oh, when yeah. I'm obsessed with Pen 15, which is this really raunchy comedy where these like two 30 year old actors are playing middle schoolers <laughs> with a yeah. bunch of actual middle schoolers. <laughs> I love it. I've been obsessed. My favorite show of all time probably is Succession. I just love like oh, the yeah. mean, uncomfortable humor. And then I love Miranda July's writing because she is just uncomfortable, but also sentimental, but like dark, but funny. And yeah. Yeah. I just um, started Succession because Kelly told me to. I'm only yeah. on episode two. It does make me really uncomfortable. <laughs> 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 it's really uncomfortable. And I started a Miranda July book that Kelly lent me. And that also makes me extremely uncomfortable. But both of them, mm. like, in, like, good artistic ways. Yeah. But uh, I watch a lot of stuff. Like, I feel like um, but when I do, it's mostly TV. But not good TV. Mm. Just need a plea, too. <laughs> well, we yeah. watched Gossip Girl, too. Oh, yeah. We watched all of Gossip Girl this pandemic. I know. Oh, wow. Like, me and me and Curtis and Peyton like usually watch a bad TV show together, and they watched Gossip you Girl. You were in Los Angeles. <laughs> well, I was in Los Angeles, which I, I I'm not on the Gossip Girl train, so I yeah, can't apparently. Tell you. <laughs> I can tell you the ending of Gossip Girl. I I was I was pissed. Yeah. You guessed it. Like, yeah, I guess it, it, first season. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also just watched all of. Chuck, that show with Zachary Levi about being a spy. I yeah. love Zachary Levi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I found, I, yeah, I found that like watching like un unsettling movies or uncomfortable ones, it's like it will either with everything going on, it will either purge the anxiety that I have or it, it will give me the anxiety that I don't want. <laughs> and so like I, it, it's kind of like a certain day specific mood like it'll work or it will not work at all I um, that. yeah yo i i love i love talking to you is there anything else about the the band or or anything else going on that y'all want to talk about i, I don't want to leave anything hanging well we do have a lot of songs that have kind of been put on hold because i can't sing but we have a lot and um really soon i'm gonna start working with a 
like a, another voice pathologist person just strictly on singing so I can get strength in my throat and we can start doing that again. Right. So there is another record that's kind of being worked on, kind of on a pause. And then we have a music video we're going to direct ourselves just next week, which we're really excited about. So we do, we are still trying to do stuff. Um, we want to print merch and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we just put a bunch of merch on Redbubble and that was a lot of fun. Nice. It's, it's been a head yeah. fuck of a time, but um, I know people have it a lot worse than we do. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I got to come yeah. back up to Washington and be with them while I recovered from the surgery. That was really nice. I feel like shitty even complaining about it, but yeah, like I haven't always handled this pandemic the best at yeah. all. Sure. Um, Same. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you for taking your time out of the day to talk to us because yeah. it's really nice and exciting to talk about skating poly stuff and not feel just yeah lost <laughs> okay. my pleasure my pleasure okay well uh y'all thank you so much uh, again i i really do love this music and connect with it and and i play it i, I work at a coffee shop and i play it whenever i can and so uh, where, where where's your coffee shop um so i am in central north carolina so i'm in uh hillsboro <gasps> north carolina that's awesome yeah it's really cool yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I, I would love to walk into a coffee shop and hear our music. That'd be the coolest thing. That's I was yeah. eating lunch. I mean, we were in Oklahoma, so it, it kind of makes sense. But it's just kind of weird. I was eating lunch with my mom outside on a corner, and someone drove by playing skating poly. Wow. That's <laughs> really cool. loud with their windows rolled down. I don't know if they saw me. I feel like also, like, coffee shop music is, like, the, like, it's always the coolest stuff. Mm. Like, yeah. and they only let the coolest person who works at the coffee shop DJ at the coffee shop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. Like, well, it's I guess it's, it's bittersweet because with everything with the pandemic, we're not letting any customers in. But so you're just playing it for yourself. So yeah. <laughs> yes, but that means I get to play it even louder. So it's kind of oh, yeah. you know give and take, give and take. <laughs> um, but all right, well. Uh, Everybody, we really hope you enjoyed it, uh, and we will see you next time. <laughs>